Good afternoon. I would like I would like to welcome you on this wonderful occasion that we have among us Mr. Sabo, that we are watching, going to watch his films, that we will talk with him, and that we can be part of this wonderful occasion that his coming uh, has created. And first of all, before I say anything about him, I would like to thank for you to come, and I would like to thank all of our supporters and help us and without whom this wouldn't have been possible. And I would like to thank very much in the first place um, Dr. Hobson Wildenthal, who has helped me throughout all these years to organize and create these visits and making possible for all of us and all of our students to meet some of the greatest historical, some of the greatest um, philosophers, some of the greatest filmmakers of our time. And among this category, of course, uh, belongs István Szabó, the famous Hungarian um, um, director who has directed numerous films. I tried to um, count their number, and I was not very good in coming out with a final number, but it's between 20 and 30. He also has received incredible awards for these movies. Um, you probably wouldn't want me to go into the detail of telling you um, for which movie he got what kind of prize, but let me tell you that he won Cannes and London and Moscow and Berlin and got the Academy Award for um, Mephisto and also the Academy Award nomination for Sunshine that he is considered by most major directors, European directors, as one of the greatest director uh, of the world, that he is a director of the European Film Academy uh, or Film School uh, where um, Ingmar Bergman has invited him. Um, he is um, a celebrated director and I got to know him a little bit, a tremendously nice and kind human being. I would like to ask you to find occasion perhaps to speak with him and, uh, and, and exchange ideas with him. Um, so what we will do right now is I would like to ask uh, Dr. Burton Einspruch to come and say a few words. Um, he is the president of our Holocaust board, the very board that has uh, been enormously instrumental in creating these occasions. Dr. Einspruch. Dr. Ajvas, greeting and thanking you for attending this series. This series is dedicated to a very serious presentation, not the glamorization of very difficult subjects. I cannot promise that you will sleep well after seeing Mr. Jabo's films, but you'll know something or understand a little differently than you had some conceptions before. Rather than speak another hour, which I had planned to do, but all my friends said, don't do it, I will read just one brief note. But if you want me to speak an hour, I will. This week, the Burton C. Einsberg Holocaust Lecture Series honors Istvan Zalbo and his enormous achievements as a filmmaker. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to add my words of praise for this exceptional man. As the United States Ambassador to Hungary, I've enjoyed the privilege of meeting many gifted Hungarians in a country where intelligence and creativity is valued at a premium. Mr. Jabo's work has earned them the right to be an emissary of Hungarian culture to the world. A gifted storyteller with a keen eye and gentle humanity, Mr. Jabo is charm personified. This tender disposition is in stark contrast to the political environment in which he was raised. Mr. Zabo and his colleagues grew up 
in a time and place where uniqueness of spirit, culture, and thought were repressed. The Holocaust and communism made up the dominant official ideologies of Jabo's youth. Through these hardships and struggles, Isfran Jabo has found a voice that is uniquely Hungarian. It is a voice that combines passion and intelligence with the necessity of survival through compromise amidst unbelievable difficulties. Mr. Zabo illustrates the challenges to man's humanity in its most extreme. I can think of no better representative of this remarkable environment than Mr. Istvan Zabo. It has been a delight to know him and a pleasure to experience his brilliance through film. I send along my most warm personal regards and admiration for such a wonderful life of artistic accomplishment. Nancy G. Brinker, Ambassador. Thank you, Burton. I'm Hobson Wildenthal, Provost of the University of Texas at Dallas. And it is a, a great pleasure for me also to welcome all of you here today for another uh, memorable occasion in the Burton C. Einspruch Lecture Series. Uh, our Holocaust Studies program is proud of the work that we do in reaching out to the Dallas community as well as to our faculty and students and staff. And uh, we are very grateful for the support that makes it possible for us to uh, have these events that uh, we think enrich both our university life and the community life. Holocaust Studies program continues to make significant progress. Over the last uh, year, we have succeeded in endowing the Einspruch Holocaust Lecture Series, an event which we're enjoying today, one of a continuing series. And we're at the verge of the next major stage in developing our program. That will be the full funding establishment of the Leah and Paul Lewis Chair in Holocaust Studies, uh, where we are uh, approaching being able to formally announce this with the authority of the Board of Regents. Much still remains to be done after endowing the lecture series and endowing the Chair of Holocaust Studies, but uh, with the momentum that you, our supporters, have uh, built up, I'm confident that under Dr. Oshvath's leadership, we will continue with the goal of making the Holocaust Studies program and all of its events and presentations fully endowed and self-perpetuating. Our occasion today honors a, a citizen of the world, a great artist, in recognizing uh, Mr. Sabo's visit to the University of Texas at Dallas and to Dallas our Holocaust Studies program has recognized him with its humanitarian award, reading East von Sabo in recognition of his achievements in 20th century cinema that illuminate profound issues of our time with great artistry and sensitivity, February the 2nd, 2003. Mr. Sabo, would you please come up and accept our award. just said that uh, I'm telling stories about the 20th century, it's true, but it means that uh, I am somebody from the past, because the 20th century is sangued over. And I hope everything that happened in the 20th century is also over. 
Professor Oshwat said that I am a European director. If you don't mind, I would like to change a tiny bit this word, European. I'm afraid that I am only a middle European director. <laughs> uh, middle European means that we have different experiences. And I'm afraid that our emotions are also different because our experiences. Uh, my, my, my aim uh, was always to tell our stories because I think our stories carry experiences. They are very, very important, uh, maybe for everybody, uh, to see the mistakes, to see the tragedies, and, and don't do it again. I know that my stories are, are not so simple and even the stories are sometimes very sad. But because I was raised and, and teached and influenced by medical doctor, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, I learned that some, some, sometimes if a bitter medicine is covered by chocolate, or sugar, or, or, or something nice, uh, then it's to accept, uh, to take it. So I try to tell the sad stories quite entertaining, because I think this is my, my, my job. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm very happy getting prizes, because the prizes help to wake up interest and ask people, oh, maybe, maybe it's interesting. We have to go and see. And this is the only <coughs> important thing, to come and see the stories, to come and, and learn the people and the people's life and the people's experience, because maybe uh, learning the stories and maybe learning the characters, you can understand them and you can see their life. That's all, and thank you really very much to invite me. And thank you to invite so many people uh, to see my films. Thank you. Um, at the request of Mr. Sabo, we are going to see the movie first. Um, and then, after the movie, we will have a brief um, question and answer period. But um, this is what we would like now to do to start the movie. Okay? That Thank you very for much. For me to speak, but it is. So forgive me. Um, I would like very much Mr. Sabo to come here and please ask questions, and he will answer them. Thank you very much. It's not obligatory to ask questions. If you don't have. Thank you very much for staying so long with us. And please, if you have any questions, I try to answer. Yes. I, uh, allowed me not to explain poetic ideas, you know, so it's something uh, like uh, it's an idea, you know. Uh, yeah, probably the recipe symbolized something, symbolized the identity of the family. Let's say the family, why the Jewish identity? The Jewish identity is represented by so many things. I don't think so that the Jewish identity need plus a recipe book. So much fine art, and it has a poignancy and a meaning the second time, which I didn't have the first, but appreciating it both times. So it's a beautiful piece of, of art and film. I have a question. It's a simple question. Why did you make this film? And that's not meant with any uh, disrespect. I mean, I think it's a marvelous. 
course, yeah, 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 I understand, I understand, absolutely. And this is the question what I ask uh, for every young people, they, uh, young filmmakers, they, 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 they uh, give me a screenplay and, and, and ask for advice. And my first question is, what is behind your idea? Why uh, is that you would like to do this film? Um, I think I wanted to tell an experience. And the experience is uh, the problem of assimilation, the problem of identity, the problem of race. I think nowadays the word uh, or better to say the second part of the, the 20th century was or is the period of, of identity crisis. Uh, thousands and thousands, even millions, leaving their own homeland, their own country, because different reasons, financial reasons, political reasons, and they would like to find a better life. But they have to find compromises. And today, for example, they are millions from Turkey. They are living in, in Germany. People, they belong to Islam, living in a Christian country. They have another language, even they have other habits, other clothes. How to live? Or so many people in South Africa, North Africa, are living in France, or even Vietnamese people. And, and they see that finding a new world, they have to cut uh, roots and change identities. I think that the greatest experience is the Jewish experience. And maybe we have to learn to understand the meaning of the word assimilation. It doesn't mean that we have to cut our roots or we have to change our identity. Assimilation, it means only that we have to accept uh, a frame, some rules, uh, of the society, they invite us, but we have to keep our color, our form, uh, our identity, and even uh, the world with us uh, will be more rich. So this middle European kind of assimilation, what means that we have to change our name and forget our religion and etc. etc. Maybe it's not the real way. And this is the experience that I, I, I try to explain, not explain, no, try to tell uh, in this time And of course, I wanted to tell some other details. For example, how this fantastic and rich word sound slowly. How uh, the taste changed from beautiful furniture uh, to the disgusting thing, how the language changed. At the beginning of the film, having the first half an hour, the language that they use is, 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 is near to literature. In a novel, in a, in a nice novel, and at the end they use it for as a verse only to express it. Uh, even, even high rank generals use it to add the words to express themselves. They, they don't have another language. You know? So everything sounds, and my question is what is going on? This is a new word. This is beautiful. And in only this case, you know, and this is what I, I, I wish to tell also, how people are displayed, how, how, yeah, I don't want to explain my feelings, do I? Mm -hmm. 
the show uh, concerning assimilation and losing identity. Uh, this is a very special European, middle European kind of, of losing identity. You know, they, they, they would like to change everything. And even they forgot everything. They want to forget everything. They have a talent to, to forget everything. Yeah. There is somebody. Yeah. Yeah, but if somebody saying as a joke. <laughs> yes, there is somebody in the back. The dancer master is saying as a joke. It's a joke in the film. It's a joke in the film. Joke. 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 It's a joke in the film. There is somebody. There is somebody who would like to ask. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was very important to me to have one character, one person, one face uh, from the beginning of the film until the end of the film. Because if I have three different faces, then the film story parts in three different parts. So we need somebody who who, who functions like a bridge <coughs> to keep the film together. And, and wait one second, because I would like to finish my line. Do you allow me? Yes, thank you very much. So, uh, it can happen in a family that a father, a son, and a grandson looks similar. And that's why I thought if we have one actor who can portray three different characters and for it you need a very, very talented actor because the three different uh, persons, they have very different characters. The first uh, man is very intellectual and living under an enormous self-control, so uh, always intense. The second one is a very physical person. And the third one is like a volcano pushing everything down. So three different characters, they move differently, they speak differently. And it's not so easy to portray three different characters with five elements. Of course, it's very easy to do it with theatric elements, you know, with big movements and with an enormous changes in voice. It's very easy. But the fine difference, the tiny difference, even how he moves, how he turns, very tiny difference to show that somebody is an introvert character, the other one is physical, and the third one puts everything down. It's very, very, uh, it's a very, how, how to say, it needs hand work. And uh, only a great actor, how he finds it, can do it. But I believe deeply even today uh, that uh, the, the, the idea to invite one actor to portray the three different characters was not the best for us. There is one last question because we have to then uh, go out of this room so fast in the reception we have opportunities. Mr. Oh, I just want to say that uh, I've seen it several times.
Thank <laughs> you. 